Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense Game tutorial video. Every good tower defense game is based on waves of enemy that spawn into the game and attack your tower. So in this video we're going to look at how to spawn in enemies based on a timer and how to create our waves that are going to attack. So let's get started. So first off, up until now, we've simply been working with a bunch of enemies that are pre-made and placed on our map. What we want to do this time around, though, is create some prefab enemies that we can just spawn into the game whenever we want based on a timer. So to do that, I'm first of all just going to head to my prefabs folder, and I'm just going to take our original robot and drag him from the hierarchy down into there. This will turn him into a prefab. You'll notice he turned blue here, and we now have him down in this folder. I'm just going to delete our other robots now. There's a couple of advantages to this. One, we'll now be able to spawn him into the game, but also now we can make changes to this prefab and it will affect all of the robots. Up till now, we've been using shift click to make changes on all of them, but this way we can just change one. Now that we have our prefab set up though, let's actually get him spawning into the game. So let's head to our scripts where we can create a new C Sharp script. I'm gonna call this one enemy spawner. So I think it probably goes without saying that in order to spawn enemies, our script is going to need to know what enemies we're spawning. So let's head up to the top where we declare our variables. We're just going to make a public game object reference, and we'll call this one enemy prefab. Back in Unity now, I'm just going to put this script onto an object. So let's right click in our hierarchy where we can create an empty object. I'm going to call this one spawner. And then I'm just going to click my transform tool here and we're going to move our spawner just off screen. Now having an invisible object can be a little bit annoying sometimes, so I'm actually just going to head up to the inspector here where we're going to add a gizmo. I'm just going to add a little red diamond. That way we can see where it is visually and that won't show up in the game. At this point we can add our enemy spawner script and you'll notice that it has this enemy prefab line, so let's get our prefab. Now just in case you're worried that we're just going to spawn in single enemies here, don't worry, we're going to make it so we can create entire waves of different enemies, but we're just going to start with one, and we'll get to the other by the end of this episode. So let's head down below our update method here, and we're just going to declare a spawn enemy method. All right now down here we're going to use the instantiate keyword, which is just computer programming for spawning, and we first of all need to tell it what we're going to spawn in. So we're going to spawn the enemy prefab, Next it wants to know where to spawn it, and we're going to do this at the transform position, so just wherever the spawner is, it will spawn it in. And finally it wants to know the rotation of the object, and we're going to continue to use this quaternion.identity. So now that we have the ability to spawn enemies in, we just need to tell it how often to do so. To do this, I'm going to head back up top, where we'll make a public float called spawn time. And let's say for now that we want to spawn in a new enemy every two seconds. Then we'll just make a private float, which will be our actual timer. We've made this one private because we don't need to see it in Unity. And just if we make too many things public, it gets our inspector looking really messy. So now, at the start of the game, our timer will just be set equal to our spawn time. So that'll set our timer up to two seconds. And then in update, we can count it down by using timer minus equals time dot delta time. Now if our timer ever gets to the point that it's at zero, or less than zero, we're going to want to call that spawn enemy method. Now you might be wondering right now, couldn't we have just written that instantiate line right here? And you're right, we could. However, one thing that we like to do when we're coding and we're gonna be adding more code to this script later on is keep our update method from getting too busy. So whenever we can, we like to compartmentalize by making sub methods. It makes it much easier to read later on when you don't have one giant update method, but instead can just look at these little ones that have self-explanatory headings. The only thing left to do to get a single enemy spawning is just in the spawn enemy method itself where once the enemy has been spawned, we're going to make our timer equal to spawn time again so that it continues to spawn. Now in Unity, our defender's moving like normal, and you'll notice that we're now getting enemies, even though there were none at the start of the game. You can see that our spawner is just sending in a new enemy every second. All right, now that's lots of fun and everything, but what if we want to actually have different enemies? So say down the road we have a... I'm just going to grab my robot here. Say we make a new version of the robot called, let's just make this one big robot. And just for the sake of making him stand out, let's make his scale extra big. 
And then I'm going to drag him down into the prefabs where, yes, we want to make an original prefab. So now we've got two different types of enemies, and at the moment our spawner doesn't allow for that. It just keeps spawning in an enemy every two seconds. Let's get rid of Big Robot. So let's pop into our script. So what we're going to do now is instead of just having a public game object reference for our enemy prefab, we're going to add these square brackets, which turns this into an array. You'll notice that that change is giving us an error in our instantiate method. I just want to pop into Unity and show you how the array works, and so I'm just going to comment this out for now so that the error doesn't keep Unity from updating. Back in Unity now, you'll notice that instead of just having our line for enemy prefab, there's now this drop-down box. And so I could put a robot in there, add another robot, but say I want the third enemy to be Big Robot, I could drag him in there. And so this allows you to customize your waves and decide exactly which enemies are going to show up in each wave. Now though, we just need to fix this problem. And right now, we can't instantiate enemy prefab because prefab is a whole list of enemies. So instead what we want to do is iterate through our list, starting with the first item and then working our way from there. So first of all, we're going to need just a variable to keep track of what po point in the spawn we're currently at. So we'll make this one private, and it'll just be an integer, and we'll call this one current enemy. Now if we don't put any value here, this will initialize at zero, which will work just fine as the first item in an array is always considered item zero. So now when I come down into my spawn enemy method, I could go to enemy prefab and then in square brackets just put a zero, which would be the first item in the array. And that would work, but it would only ever spawn the first item in the array. So instead we're going to put current enemy in here. Then we'll come down to the next line and we'll do current enemy plus plus, which is just a shorthand notation that adds one each time. So the first time it would spawn enemy zero, the next time enemy one, and on and on. Now for test purposes, I'm just going to add a couple more robots to our array, and we'll mix up the order a bit. At this point, things are almost perfect. Our robots do indeed spawn in the order they're supposed to. However, I'll fast forward to the end here. As soon as we get to the end, our console starts popping errors like crazy. If you look down here, it's just noting that the index is now outside the bounds of the array, and this is for enemy spawner in line 33, so let's go there. All right, so our problem here is in line 33, and what's happening is once we get to the end of our array, we keep adding enemies to our array, so it becomes larger than the number of enemies there actually are. So it tries to instantiate another enemy but can't find one. While this isn't game-breaking, it's not good practice to have our console popping errors on us, so let's just fix that. So what we're going to do is anytime we add a new enemy, we're going to do a quick if statement to check to see if the current enemy is greater than or equal to our enemy prefab dot length. This will just check to see if we are now at a point where the number of enemies that are supposed to spawn are more than the number of enemies there actually are. Don't forget that equal sign or it won't work. Now if that is the case, we're just going to put this dot enabled equals false. This refers to the script we're currently in. So as soon as our current enemy becomes more than or equal to our number of prefabs, it'll just turn the script off. Later on, we'll add some logic here for ending the stage and moving us to the next one, but for now, this will resolve the error. We'll just run the test one more time, and I'll just use fast forward to quickly get to the end here. And now, as our last robot spawns in, you'll notice that the enemy spawner component is turned off and no errors. All right, we've got some other issues, but our waves themselves are working quite nicely. Hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like, subscribe, or just leave a comment below. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.